In this short video, I will explain how we process payments inside Splinks. The goal is to automate as much as possible using our software. So there are three ways how you can process Splinks payments. The first one and the simple one is you just go to Splinks and mark your payment, mark your invoices paid inside the platform, clicking one button. Uh, the second option, if you have a person who receives money in cash, there is a cash desk tool that can help you to not provide full access to the platform, to not provide access to all financial details of the customer to this person, but uh, he or she will have this limited access through cash desk tool. And then of course, the majority of our clients, they use online payment platforms. It's uh, integration with the bank accounts or it's uh, African net cash pay fast and PESA payment gateways, Australian and New Zealand is IntegraPay and Payment Express, which is called now WineCave. Uh, European payment systems like a SEPA or GoCardless or International, which is PayPal, Braintree and Stripe that we use in our company. And in US, you have option of IPPay and Authorize.net and several other payment gateways that will allow you to receive your payments in Springs. So let's take a look first how we can process manually so there are some invoices and splings and we can match the payment to invoice just by clicking this button okay this button says pay what is my payment type i say okay customer is paying me in cash now and this is my amount and i just add the payment and it can send received after adding the payment automatically to the customer and for example paid in cash in my office so this is very simple way how I can add a payment. If I have a customer, let's choose this customer test. So his balance is minus 88. So customer uh, comes to my office and uh, I want to receive the payment of 100 euro instead of 88. If I just mark the invoice, it will create exactly, you can see here it will create 88, the sum of the invoice, the value of the invoice, and uh, I will not be able to change it to say I cannot change it. So if I want to create a payment, I can just add one payment here and say, okay, 100 is my uh, payments that I'm receiving. Okay, again, 100 euro in cash is my comments. I'm adding the payment. And this, if I go to transaction history, I see that I charge my client for 86 and there is a payment for 100, the invoice, is not marked as paid in this case because there is no settings to mark invoices paid from account balance by default, but the payment is there. So if I go to my billing overview, I see that the account balance is 11 euro. So which means that the customer do not owe us money. And so here you can see how to pay invoices from account balance was disabled. So if I want this invoice to be immediately paid and marked as paid when I receive this type of um, overpayment. So then I will show you how to do that. I just delete this payment now. And on the settings of the client or general settings of the system, I can set up this out to pay invoices from account balance. Okay, so this is what I'm doing now, saving it. And under payments, I'm adding again the payment for 100 euro, saying cash, test, whatever. This is not needed to add, but I will add it. And now when I have this and when I go to my invoice, it says that the invoice was paid from account balance. So if I go to my list of my invoices and then when I refresh that, you can see that this one shows paid account balance. And in my list of payments, there are certain payments saying cash, cash, cash. So this one was imported from zero automatically from accounting, but all others I created manually using cash. So I would like to show you how we work and how you can work with other online payment gateways. The payment gateways we install under configuration. So if I go scroll down to my config and when I go to my uh, add-ons, there are add-ons that we can use. And for example, PayPal. So I can install the PayPal this way and I can install brain to go Stripe. So you can see that in our platform, we have these add-ons installed. And the configuration is straightforward. I just go to my module list and inside PayPal or Stripe, I just click the button and I configure my 
data there, adding my username password that I have from this platform. And then this add-on becomes available for me. And I will show you how we work if we choose the customer here, for example, let's find the customer that we will test. On this client, I can send the invoice or perform invoice in this case, it doesn't matter. This is sent automatically and I can send also manually the mail saying, okay, choose the template. This is your invoice number notification and please pay. As you can see here, we are grabbing some variables inside the uh, header of the template and then there are links to PayPal, credit card payment and to customer portal. This is the message that our customers receive from us and also that our uh, clients internet providers send to their customers. Okay, so if I send this message, I will receive this message in my uh, email. So let's try that. And when I log into my email, we will see the link from there. So here is the email that I sent and you can see that if I click the button PayPal, I'm redirected to the PayPal and I can pay this uh, using PayPal. So I have to log in there and say yes. Or if I go to credit card, it immediately asks me to add my credit card there and make a payment, but I can also log in through this customer portal and uh, check it there. So it says there is a, some password username that I can use. So I'm logging there and it says there is your, you can pay 10 dollars, 10 euro using PayPal or credit card. If I go to my finance and there is a credit card option to save it or to create, you can see I can save my credit card number there and it will be used there. So this is the option how to process the payments uh, by customer, uh, how he can add his data. And of course, there is another option that we have is uh, direct debit orders. Okay, if I have this payment gateway connected, then we just go to here on the invoice list and uh, there is a charge button. So this charge button actually works for direct debit orders. So I can select the conditions. This is the manual direct debit order sending. I can configure auto charge filters and charge it uh, automatically every month. So let's check it. How does it work manually first? It says all invoices that are unpaid now and uh, that has any type of the customer payment. I can select that they have cash or bank transfer. So I would like to confirm it. I would like to export it to my payment gateway that is installed. So I confirm the charge and click button charge. And in this case, it just sends uh, all the information to my direct debit processor and it makes uh, all the invoices paid. So for example, here it will charge this four invoices. So this is the way I can do it manually once per month or I can create auto charge filter and I can say, okay, this is exactly the same thing. I, I enable that and say day of issue or next day after issuing, this is my time when I want to send direct debit order to, to my processing engine. So for example, 8 a.m. I will send it for all customer payment, payment type. That's for example, credit card and status unpaid. And even I can choose that the value of the invoice is more than five euro to not charge small invoices or three euro. And I say, and here I select if I have my um, NatCash or Sage One, Sage Pay or whatever installed there for direct debit orders or authorized net, I just select it from there and save. Okay, so then it creates me the filter and this filter will be used every single month when the invoice was, is created, it will just generate a direct debit order automatically. And on the charge history, it, it will show me if there were errors or if it was correct. So for example, if I click the charge button here, you see that there is no installed uh, yet any direct debit order form, but if, it, if I have it, it will just confirm it and charge all these four invoices automatically. So these are the options of online payments 
And uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention is the cache, de uh, cache desk add-on. So this is the add-on that you can install under your configuration. And uh, again, we go to add-ons. There is an option to find cache desk. And this is, I install it. When this is installed, there will be an option to log into cache desk as uh, administrator. So it's installing. So let's give it a few seconds. And when the installation is done under my administrative profile, under administrators, I can select to administrator that he will log into cache desk. So we can see the cache desk access is enabled. Now to get the access there, you just have to go to your URL and type slash cache desk instead of admin. So here it is, cache desk and that it will show you this data. So you can find a customer and as a super administrator, I can see also my deposits of the administrators. I can assign some money to the administrator saying, okay, so he is able to use up to $1,000. He can top up accounts of customers. And then if I'm as an administrator, Alex, I find my client, for example, Alex, let's check if I have some customers with name Alex here. It will show me all customers with name Alex. Yeah, it found only one. And there is a customer with two unpaid invoices. So I can add my uh, money to their account. For example, 90 paying, okay, paying cash. And then I select from the invoice, I select this one for 90 and the payment is cash. Okay, so you see that I don't have to log into my splings there. I don't have to go to my finance and invoices and whatever do there. I just add it through my cash desk account. And so this is limited access and that's all. So my payment should be added. If I go to my payments, refresh that, there is a payment number A. So you can see paying cash, Alex splings, everything is done. So I think that's all for now regarding the payments and uh, thank you for your time.